Hello everyone. Greetings to you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I believe you're doing good and I believe that you are experiencing the hand of God in your life. Welcome to part 2 of the of this Holy Spirit series and I believe the first part has blessed you immensely and you have a, you were able to learn something about the Holy Spirit and uh, in this video also uh, I will be sharing from Matthew, Mark and Luke. I will I take three books uh, from the bible and i will share about the holy spirit in these three books uh, and uh, if you're watching me for the first time uh, this is evans francis from nagpur india i'm an evangelist into full time ministry from last 14 years and uh, i believe that this videos will bless you immensely it will help you to come more closer to god and it will empower you you will be able to renew your mind with the word of god and you will understand that how much holy spirit is important and if you haven't uh, subscribed to this channel do subscribe hit the bell icon so you won't miss any part of it and uh, this series can go for a year but i'm trying my level best to finish it off early because there are a lot of things to teach you there are a lot of things to share with you and uh, time is running out we don't know how much time we have on this earth so when lord has given me the time i'm just using it for his glory and uh, using it more so that i can be a blessing to you because we cannot take uh, our life as uh, as uh, just to live uh, for no purpose we should never live like that we should always be uh, able to have a gratitude for every day that the lord has given lord is giving us so that we can live for him that is very important uh, we should never uh, we should never uh, live in a manner that uh, that will bring bad name on the body of christ uh, we should never exploit the grace and mercy of god and uh, that is what i am i always try my level best that whatever the lord gives me the burden to share with you i am sharing this with you and uh, thank you Uh, for tuning in so without wasting lot of time let us pray and dive into the word of god father god we come to thy presence in this wonderful time master lord we come to the throne of grace i give your children into thy hands the lives into thy hand i give today's word into thy hand lord you speak to your children master lord open their uh, mind for so that they will be able to understand your word master i cancel all the hindrances master holy spirit help us guide us and lord give me the strength to share the message in its context master and lord work in people's life also so that they will be able to receive the word do not allow the devil to come and steal the word lord you are doing it for that i thank you in jesus precious name we pray amen 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 Bef- before i start i would like to read from luke chapter 4 verses 1 to 20 it says there we can see the temptation of jesus christ and it says from verse 1 then jesus full of the holy spirit returned from the jordan river he was led by the spirit in the wilderness where he was tempted by the devil for 40 days jesus ate nothing all that time and we became very hungry then the devil said to him if you are the son of god tell the stones to become a loaf of bread but jesus told him no the scripture says people do not live by bread alone then the devil took him up and revealed to him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time i will give you the glory of these kingdoms and th- and authority over them the devil said because they are mine to give to anyone i please i will give it all to you if you will worship me jesus replied the scripture says you must worship the lord your god and serve him only Then the devil took him to Jerusalem uh, to the highest point of the temple and said if you are the son of god jump off for the scripture says he will order his angels to protect and guard you and they will hold you up with their hands so that you won't even hurt your foot on a stone then jesus responded the scripture also says you must not test the lord your god when the devil has finished tempting jesus he left him under the he left him until the next uh, opportunity came then jesus returned to galilee filled with the holy spirit power report about him spread quickly through the whole region he taught regularly in the synagogue and and uh, 
and was praised everywhere when he came to the village of nazareth his boyhood home he went as usual to the synagogue on the sabbath and stood up to read the scripture the scroll of isaiah the prophet was handed to him he unrolled the scroll and found the place where this was written the spirit of the lord is upon me for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor he has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released that the blind will see that the oppressed will be set free and that the time of the lord's favor has come he rolled up the scroll handed it back to the attendant and sat down all the eyes all eyes in the synagogue looked at him intently so here you can see in the beginning it when jesus went for the fasting it says then jesus full of the holy spirit you know went in for the fasting but he when he came out of 40 days fasting it was written he was filled with the holy spirit power and in other uh, in other translation it says full of the holy spirit first he was filled he, he was full of the holy spirit then it says uh, with the holy spirit power he came into uh, came out of the of the fasting and it is very important that uh, jesus was filled with the holy spirit and it is very important by the end of this message you will understand that even you can have that power and it is not specifically only for jesus or the apostles it is still available today for those who want it who have a desire for it from my experience one of the reason why people become unbalanced in one way or another when thinking of the holy spirit is precisely because they will not take the whole bible that is the reason there are there are thousands of denominations and sub denominations because they take a text out of context and they make it uh, their bible they say this is the whole truth but remember it should always be the whole bible and nothing but the bible be our basis so when you study a topic you have to study the whole bible that is the reason god gave us uh, 66 books uh, that is very very important uh, they will remember if if there was no need of the old testament even though we are out of the law but there are so many things that we can learn because uh, you know the old test the new testament is revealed in the old testament and if you even though you don't know the uh, the or the new testament you can still understand reading about jesus through the old testament if you have the holy spirit with you remember one thing that uh, that god is able to do anything you cannot stop god you cannot put him in a box and that's how you need to be i was talking to one brother i think last week uh, and uh, and uh, he said that while i was praying the holy spirit came upon me i and i spoke in tongues you know but he had the desire you know many of us we have a desire but we don't pray you need to pray you need to keep on asking and i'm still getting so many messages where people saying that while praying i received the holy spirit i don't we don't know how it happened but it happened we are speaking in unknown language even though nobody laid their hand on them remember that's what it is god will give only to those who ask him fervently who ask him continuously just not just i will fast and pray for 3 days uh, and if i don't receive the holy spirit uh, so i will maybe i will god has not kept it from me that's not the way you need the holy spirit and i heard a pastor saying it took him 17 years to receive the holy spirit when i remember when i got married with my wife uh, she comes from a from a nominal christian background uh, they in their church nobody even taught about uh, holy spirit they don't talk about holy spirit they don't teach about holy spirit uh, but but when i got an invitation for to go to mauritius the lord categorically told me you have to pray for the holy spirit for your wife first and then only you will be able to tackle tackle the the obstacles and the fiery darts of the devil in your marriage in your ministry and we fasted we both fasted for 7 days and she got the gift of tongues and gift of speaking in unknown language on the 7th day on the last hour that is how you know we had the desire 
if we didn't quit just because once we prayed it didn't happen because they, it's a process if your repentance is not right with you are not repenting right way you are continuously living in sin your faith is tainted you haven't no if you have not taken baptism in the holy spirit baptism in the water in the name of father son and holy spirit there might be certain issues so if you you are doing it all together well then it is important that you keep on asking till god gives you that is faith is all about remember that between the end of the old testament and the beginning of the new testament uh, there is a gap of 400 years if you open up your bible i don't know about the recent bibles but the old bibles after malachi they will keep one one page empty and that shows the 400 years where there was no work of the holy spirit uh, remember that is not because there were no records of were written then there are books called apocrypha and this is still one of the major point of differences between the roman catholics and the protestants sir and protestant says those books should not be in the bible because they are not god's word whereas catholics believe they are so why those books are not in the protestant bible or in the our bible and why those books are there in the catholics the answer in the answer is in a phrase that occurs as i said last time approx 4000 times and precisely 3800 times in the old testament but not uh, not once in the apocrypha that that the stent sentence is thus says the lord and no word from the god came in that period there was no prophet in that time who could say this is what god says so the old testament begins with the book of moses who was the first great prophet and it ends with the book of malachi who was the last prophet and the bible does not begin again until god speaks again no matter how thrilling the stories of maccabees may be no matter how many exciting things happen in those 400 years the fact is that where the holy spirit is not operating on human beings in god's eyes there is nothing worth recording so the, does that mean that uh, nobody thought about the holy spirit for 400 years no they did and in the old testament as we have discussed in the last video there were two great promises firstly that one day there would come from god a king who would be filled with the holy spirit and who would be able to do and say the things of god and secondly when he came all the people could be filled with the spirit as well and god's spirit could be poured up out upon all flesh men and women young and old so those two dreams are all that i can tell you about the work of the holy spirit between the old and the new testament and when we read matthew mark and luke uh, about year 5 bc the holy spirit began to touch uh, after that time of waiting the holy spirit began again to fill some ordinary people and enable them to say and do supernatural thing and first of all all by touching an elderly couple and a young teenager before the, I, i come into this i want to say something as i said this uh, the, that the when the holy spirit is not operating on human beings in god's eye there is nothing worth recording you need to know that it is very very important that we need to have the holy spirit we need to have the baptism of the holy spirit church miss that the pastors who don't have that they don't teach that and it becomes very hard for them to teach because they don't know that what happens if you have the holy spirit uh, you live in a, another dimension the way you talk the way you live the way you think it's all totally different and i believe in the series that this series is all about giving you an urge to pray maybe you have uh, lost that thirst that i want the baptism of the holy spirit i want to speak in tongues i want to speak in unknown language i want to worship god in spirit and truth and that has to be there and remember 
without the holy spirit your life is uh, you are living a half life i won't say even half life you are just living a one uh, 10 10% of your life uh, when holy spirit comes your life changes completely and remember after 400 years uh, holy spirit began to some began to fill some ordinary people and enable them to say and do supernatural thing and he did that first touching an elderly couple and then a young teenage couple now the elderly couple was a godly pair was zechariah and elizabeth and there was and the young teenage couple were were uh, were uh, joseph and mary who were engaged remember there was a similarity between both both couples were childless and one because they were too old to have children and had had none and the other because they weren't even married yet both the couples couples the holy spirit gave a son in one case in one case a boy called john and in the other case a boy called jesus humanly speaking in neither case or there have been a baby at all but the holy spirit was beginning again to work miracles the younger couple lived in the north of the holy land and the elderly couple lived towards the south but they were related so that in fact the boys were probably cousins and when we look at this uh, two couples and see what the holy spirit did to them according to the gospel mark and luke and we are going to study about them in this video remember zechariah had two dreams or i would say ambitions and neither of which until then been fulfilled and it rather looked now as if neither ever would remember that uh, many times you are going through situations that you will say that i had this desire i had i wanted all these things to happen but i tell you that same situation was there in the life of zechariah but remember when holy spirit comes things happen your situations change your family changes your married life changes everything changes so the two ambitions were this of zechariah remember zechariah was a priest and he was one of the thousands of priests who took their duties in the temple at Jerusalem and he lived just a few miles away down the valley but he would go up to Jerusalem he commuted commuted he the to the town and he worked in the temple as a priest and uh, once a year it was the great privilege of one priest to go into the holy place all alone into the darkness and burn the lamp of incense at the altar and it was quite obvious with thousands of priest around most of them would never get a chance to go in so how did they do it they used to cast lots and every priest hoped that one day before he retired the lot would come to him and that was zacharias first ambition the second ambition which was of every priest was to have a son but because because the priesthood was hereditary so then he could pass on the privilege to his son but zacharias wife was long past the age of having children and he had given up hope of one of his dream and he had been a a, a priest for probably 40 years and was near retirement and beginning to give up hope for the other ambition as well but one day when the priest gathered together to cast lots as to who should go into the holy place the name of zechariah came up remember it must have been the most dramatic moment for this old man along being alone with god in a place where god lived among his people and there zechariah burned the incense and you will know it understand when we read from luke chapter 1 verses 5 
to 25 when i'm re when i'm sharing this message with you i don't know about you but i am feeling the heavy presence of god from head to toe when i'm sharing this and that's the work of the holy spirit i know that god is moving in your situation i know that holy spirit is giving you the confirmation he is giving you the urge he is dealing with you and without a single doubt i know this message will change you remember when we read the uh, book of luke chapter 1 verses 5 to 25 there we can see the birth of john the baptist foretold it says when herod was king of judea there was a jewish priest named zechariah he was a member of the priestly order of abijah and his wife elizabeth was also from the priestly line of aaron zechariah and elizabeth were righteous in god's eyes careful to obey all of the Lord's commandments and regulation. They had no children because Elizabeth was unable to conceive and they were both very old. One day Zechariah was seen serving God in the temple for his order was on a duty that we, as was the custom of the priest, he was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and burn incense. While the incense was being burned, a great crowd stood outside praying. When Zechariah was in the sanctuary, an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing to the right of the incense altar. Zechariah was shaken and overwhelmed with fear when he saw him, but the angel said, Don't be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayer. Your wife Elizabeth will give you a son and you are to name him John. You will have great joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the, in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine or other alcoholic drinks. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth, and he will turn many Israelites to the Lord their God. He will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah. He will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. He will return the hearts of the father to their children and he will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. Zechariah said to the angel, How can I be sure this will happen? I am an old man now and my wife is also well along in years. Here you can see that the how Zechariah responded. It was very humanly. It's, he says that how can I be sure this will happen? And why he was thinking like that? Because he was thinking without the Holy Spirit. Uh, and which is what uh, someone is doing if they say something promised by God is impossible. Remember, the word impossible is not a word in God's dictionary. When we see, read Jeremiah 30 to 27, it says, I am the Lord, the God of all the people of the world. Is anything too hard for me? When we read Matthew 19, 26, it says, Jesus looked at them intently and said, Humanly speaking, it is impossible, but with God everything is possible. You need to understand one thing. When you don't have the Holy Spirit baptism, you will see situations as it is impossible. And that is the human nature. But remember, when you have the Holy Spirit, uh, everything is possible with, you, with God. Uh, and you will have that attitude in you. You will have that character in you. And I have seen this uh, having uh, I, uh, the youngsters in our church who are filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, who have the desire to walk in the Lord. Uh, whatever situation I share with them, see, this is what is happening. You know, even the youngsters saying, God will do it. They will never say it is impossible. In Hindi, they will always say, Parmeshwar karega, Parmeshwar hai na. Like that type of attitude you will have when you have the Holy Spirit. Remember, if whatever situation might be in front of you, might be a Red Sea situation, might be a wall of Jericho situation. But when you have the Holy Spirit, uh, you will say it is possible with God. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit, uh, you will be worried. Uh, you will be anxious. Uh, 
you will go in depression and that shows that you don't have the holy spirit uh, remember sometimes even having the holy spirit you will act as if you don't have the holy spirit uh, remember with with god you can over over go, over go to any wall and you can go against any troop uh, with god remember when god is on your side nobody can be against you when we read from verse 19 it says uh, then the angel said i am gabriel i stand in the very presence of god it was he who sent me to bring you this good news but now since you didn't believe what i said you will be silent and unable to speak until the child is born for my words will certainly be fulfilled at the proper time meanwhile the people were waiting for zechariah to come out of the sanctuary wondering why he was taking so long when he finally did come out he couldn't speak to them then they realized from his gesture and his silence that he must have seen a vision in the sanctuary so the angel you can see that the angel told zechariah that he would be struck dumb for 9 months for not believing and that proved to him and to others that god was doing something in his life remember you cannot please god without faith you need to have faith whatever situation my you might be going whatever struggles you might be going whatever situations you might be going you need to have faith in the lord when we read verses 23 to 25 it says when zechariah's week of service in the temple was over he returned home soon afterwards his wife elizabeth became pregnant and went into seclusion for 5 months how kind the lord is she explained uh, exclaimed uh, he has taken away my disgrace of having no children just imagine zechariah the poor old man when he got outside couldn't even tell his wife what has happened uh, but remember they came together physically as old people and she conceived and told her husband that she was going to have a child but uh, whatever um, but uh, you know she still didn't know that it is going to be a boy and the secret was locked up within zechariah unless he wrote it down for her so, but remember god gave strength to abraham and sarah and god gave strength here to zechariah and elizabeth remember you might be old but remember if god has given you a promise and you believe in it without a single doubt remember you can see that happening in your life if you are childless remember nothing is impossible for the lord all you have to do is trust in him keep faith uh, and remember they came together physically remember if you have faith and you are not coming physically you will never see that manifest you have to come physically and you will see things taking place uh, you say it's been 18 years of my marriage it's been 13 years or 30 years of my marriage but this is not there in my uh, in my material but what the holy spirit is telling me i'm just sharing you have to come together remember and then you will see things taking place sir uh, you have to allow the holy spirit to work in your dead situation in your barren situation and when you have faith and when you keep on coming together you will see things taking place in your life when we read luke chapter 1 verses 57 to 66 uh, there we can see the birth of john the baptist uh, it says uh, when it was time for elizabeth's baby to be born she gave birth to a son and when her neighbors and relatives heard that the lord has been very merciful to her everyone rejoiced with her when the baby was 8 days old they all came for the circumcision ceremony they wanted to name him zechariah after his father but elizabeth said no his name is john what they exclaimed there is no one in all your family by that name so they used to gesture to ask the baby's father what he wanted to name him he mentioned for a writing tablet and to everyone surprised he wrote his name is john instantly 
Zechariah could speak again and he began praising God. Awe fell upon the whole neighborhood and the news of what was happened spread throughout the Judean hills. Everyone who heard about it reflected on these events and asked what this child turned out to be for the hand of the Lord was surely upon him in a special way. When we read from verse 67, it says, uh, Then his father Zechariah, see very important, you might have missed this many times you read the Bible, but see what is, it, it, what is written. Then his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and gave this prophecy. See, Holy Spirit started to work even before the day of Pentecost uh, when the Holy Spirit came uh, on the on 120 people. Remember, it says uh, he was filled with the Holy Spirit and gave this prophecy. Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has visited and redeemed his people. He has sent us a mighty savior from the royal line of his servant David, just as he promised through his holy prophets long ago. Now we will be saved from our enemies and from all who hates us. And he has been merciful to our ancestors by remembering his sacred covenant, the covenant he swore with an oath to our ancestor Abraham. We have been rescued from our enemies so we can serve God without fear in holiness and righteousness for, for as long as we live. And you, my little son, will be called the prophet of the Most High because you will prepare the way for the Lord. You will tell his people how to find salvation through forgiveness of their sins. Because of God's tender mercy, the morning light from heaven is about to break upon us, to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide us to all path of peace. John grew up and became strong in spirit, and he lived in the wilderness until he began his public ministry to Israel. Have you noticed how people are filled how are people filled with the Holy Spirit, then usually words come out of their mouth. And that is what happens when you are baptized with the Holy Spirit. Uh, you speak in unknown language, you speak in tongues. Uh, and certain words were said uh, about the boy to, Je to Zechariah, which uh, we need to be noticed. Uh, remember, there is a strange contrast between John and Jesus. Uh, Remember, Jesus was called a wine bieber by his enemies. He was not teetotal. But it is said of John that from his birth he would not touch wine or strong drinks. We also learn that he would be the first person in the whole of history to be filled with the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb. Samson had been a grown man when spirit filled him. Moses was a grown man when the spirit filled him. And if you go through the Old Testament like we did in the last video, people, people were adults before they were filled with the spirit throughout that era. But when John was, but John was different from anybody else. He spent most of his time out in the desert alone. That was his school where God taught him. So John began to preach and the word spread there was a prophet in Israel again. The people had waited for God to speak and now he was speaking again and they began to flock and hear the prophet. Remember, these people have heard about prophets uh, from their, uh, because the uh, Holy Spirit stopped uh, uh, speaking for 400 years. So they only remember that what their great, far, great, 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 great grandfather have uh, witnessed that. Uh, remember, John did not perform any miracles for them. The extraordinary thing about John was that his supernatural power was in what he said, not what he did. And one day in the crowd that came to hear him, there came the other boy. 
now himself a grown man and the holy spirit began to do same thing even more extraordinary now let me go back to the other young couple joseph and mary and see what the holy spirit has done with them here was were a couple of engaged teenager couple of engaged teenager girls were engaged at 15 years of age in jewish culture a boy became a man at 12 and assumed full adult responsibility and married around 16 so the picture you see of joseph and mary as a middle aged person people are wide of the mark you must be imagine when you imagine a 16 year old boy and a 15 year old girl that you are closer to how they were when when mary became pregnant and these two teenagers were very happy they are engaged to be married and which is a very serious thing in engagement in those days was much more than going out together and dating like we have uh, in this present time in it meant that the girl took the man's name and if he died before they were married she was regarded as a widow and they were engaged uh, but the marriage has not been consummated uh, so when we read luke chapter 1 verses uh, 26 to 55 there we can see the birth of jesus foretold it says in the 6 in the 6th month of elizabeth's pregnancy god sent his angel gabriel to nazareth a village in galilee to a virgin named mary she was engaged to be married to a man named joseph a descendant of king david gabriel appeared to her and said greetings favored woman The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary. The angel told her, "For you have found favor with God, and you will conceive and conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High God." the lord will give him the throne of his ancestor david and he will reign over israel forever his kingdom will never end mary asked the angel how could this happen i am a virgin the angel replied the holy spirit will come upon you and the power of the most high will overshadow you so the baby to be born will be holy and he will be called the son of god what's more your relative elizabeth has uh, became pregnant in her old age people used to say she was barren but she has conceived a son and is now in her 6th month for the word of the lord will never fail but mary responded i am lord servant may everything you have said about me come true and the angel left her a few days later mary hurried to the hill country of judea to the town where zechariah lived she entered the house and greeted elizabeth at the sound of mary's greeting elizabeth's child leaped within her and elizabeth was filled with the holy spirit remember what it saying elizabeth was filled with the holy spirit and elizabeth gave a glad cry and exclaimed to mary god has blessed you above all women and your child is blessed why am i so honored that the mother of my lord should visit me when i heard your greetings the baby in my womb jumped for joy you are blessed because you believed that the lord would do what he said then you can see the mary responded and she also filled with the holy spirit and prophesied and she responded oh how my soul praised the lord how my spirit rejoices in god my savior for he took notice of his lowly servant girl and from now on all generation will call me blessed for the mighty one is holy and he has done great things for me 
he shows mercy from generation to generation to all who fear him his mighty arm has done tremendous thing he has scattered the proud and haughty uh, haughty ones he has brought down the princes from their throne and exalted the humble he has filled the hunger hungry with good things and sent the rich ones rich away with empty hands he has helped his servant israel and remembered to be merciful for he has made his promise to our ancestors and to abraham and his children forever now you can see what is happening over this few years around the birth of these two boys ordinary men and women were prophesying being filled with the spirit opening their mouth and speaking extraordinary words uh, which are so much the word of god that we have uh, treated them so ever since uh, here you can see two pregnant women and two miracle mothers uh, one is old married for many years childless and barren the other is young have never been married and a virgin one is in her 670s or so and one is in her early teens interestingly enough they are relatives and they both have been chosen by god to be the human instrument for the birth of two very very unusual men john the baptist the greatest prophet who ever lived until his time and jesus son of god son of man and savior of the world remember in both the cases the angel gabriel came to make the announcement in the first case the angel gabriel came to zechariah who was the father of john the baptizer thus and zechariah received the message from gabriel that he and his wife elizabeth together would conceive and have a son who would be the greatest prophet the forerunner of messiah gabriel then came later to a virgin to mary and gave her the message that uh, we saw in verse 23 to 33 and and that she without a man would would be given a child who would uh, be the son of god so all of a sudden redemptive theory reaches to its uh, high point uh, remember the boy jesus was born who know nothing about him for 30 years about whom we know nothing for 30 years except for one little glimpse uh, when the curtain is pulled up and we see a boy who already knows that his father was not joseph but god uh, before i miss uh, i want to say one thing remember when angel came and meet uh, meet met mary and said that she will become the mother of jesus she said how it is possible you know because i never been with a man i am a virgin that's what happens without the holy spirit when holy spirit came upon mary she prophesied and we have read that the magnificent what she said but remember that without the holy spirit that's how human think it is impossible when i look at my life you know i have been in 14 in ministry for 14 years and you know i never went to a bible college i don't have the wisdom and knowledge like the earthly people have whatever i know it has been taught by the holy spirit but remember i have seen things taking place in my life which was impossible my marriage my family life the whatever ministry i am doing today the lord is asking me to do everything when i think about it it is impossible the position the lord has brought me to it is impossible for me to you know comprehend i cannot think about it i cannot uh, imagine but that is what happened that when you think without the holy spirit uh, for everything you will say it's impossible any that's what happens in the church also 
that anyone says that uh, we have to do something like this we can add something this you know the people will say no we want to do as our forefathers did uh, like that type of people will stand they don't want change they will say it's impossible we have uh, worshiped the lord in the same manner two songs one prayer two songs message and then ending you know we do like that uh, but we will not change our schedule but when holy spirit comes uh, remember he brings order and he will destroy the order of men and he will bring an order in your situation remember one thing that uh, that why did not god tell us anything about jesus for 30 years out of his 3 uh, and a half years of ministry why is there nothing in the bible about his childhood why is there nothing about how how about how he was related to the people of nazareth as a carpenter in the village that question uh, arises uh, and there are many speculations people say that he was in egypt he was uh, uh, he was there in egypt for in his childhood uh, till king uh, king herod died uh, but uh, he some say they were he was in india some say he was in china but why it is not mentioned the answer is very simple for 30 years the holy spirit was not operating through him like for 400 years have been omitted from the history of israel and 30 years from the recording concerning jesus when we read verse uh, luke chapter 2 verses 52 it says jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with god and all people jesus developed physically he grew he grew in stature he developed mentally he grew in wisdom he developed socially he was in favor with other men and spiritually he was in favor with god no doubt jesus was above average in that the that the teachers in the temple noticed uh, that his questions were very wise for his age uh, but the point is this uh, the people of nazareth saw nothing in this boy to make them think he was more than an unusual boy they saw no miracles they heard no sermons he neither gave them the word of the god word of god nor the deeds of god he was a boy developing into a man and working that was all they saw during the 30 years if you and i we had lived at nazareth during that time we would not have come to the conclusion that the son of god was living down the street you would have said or we would have said that have you noticed joseph's son you know he is a nice fellow he is a nice boy well balanced i like him but for for those 30 years god tells us nothing about his son because there is nothing to tell except for that one glimpse which shows that he already knew that the god's son that uh, that's all uh, unlike his cousin john we are not told that he was filled with uh, the holy spirit uh, from his birth jesus was not filled uh, from birth he was filled after the baptism and we come to a point uh, and when the curtain is lifted uh, completely and we are asked to look in detail at his life uh, and it occurs uh, at the age of 30 notice his age at the age of 30 knowing what he was doing he left the carpentry shop uh, for the last time in nazareth left his brothers and walked 70 miles to the jordan river there he came to his cousin john and asked uh, to be baptized uh, when we read matthew chapter 3 verses 13 to 17 there we can see it's written then jesus went from galilee to the jordan river to be baptized by john but john tried to talk him out of it i am the one who needs to be baptized by you he said so why are you coming to me but jesus said it is very important those who are not baptized in water in the name of father son and holy spirit it is very important it says but jesus said it should be done for me must carry out all that god requires so john agrees to baptize him 
after his baptism as jesus came out of the water the heaven were opened and he saw the spirit of god descending like a dove and setting on him and a voice from heaven said this is my dearly loved son who bring great joy remember john knew that jesus was not a sinner and did not need to have sin washed away he wanted to be baptized by jesus but jesus insist on being baptized when we read from verse 32 to 34 it says then john testified i saw the holy spirit descending like a dove from heaven and resting upon him i didn't know he was the one but when god sent me to baptize with water he told me the one whom you see the spirit descend and rest is the one who will baptize with the holy spirit i saw this happen to jesus so i testify that he is the chosen one of god remember they had longed for a spirit filled prince and john saw this happen and jesus was anointed with power that day it was the only because of this uh, he was able to do miracles uh, afterwards uh, when jesus the son of god was born born he was as dependent as we are on the power of the holy spirit to do anything to preach the word of god to perform the deeds of god and he couldn't have done it before then when we read matthew 4:1 there we can see that uh, then jesus what was led by the spirit uh, in the wilderness to be tempted there by the holy spirit uh, and when we read luke chapter 4 verse 14 it says uh, then jesus returned in the power of the spirit in galilee and uh, news of him went out through all the surrounding region first he was led by the spirit when he came out he was with the power of the spirit and this is language that has not been used of him before his baptism because it was not true of him and before his baptism here was the issue in the wilderness when jesus as a human being to be controlled by devil or satan or the holy spirit that was the happening in wilderness the devil was tempting jesus either he can be controlled by the devil or the holy spirit and satan was trying desperately try my way like he always deceive us people who are not filled with the spirit who don't know the word of god that is how devil was trying to deceive jesus like he was saying turn the stones into bread jump off the pinnacle of the temple the battle was on but jesus a real human being he could either let the devil control him or the holy spirit control him and it was only now that jesus began to do his miracles he began to raise the dead he began to heal the sick he began to cause the deaf to hear and the blind to see and the dumb to to speak there are two extraordinary conclusions that i am going to share with you and i don't think that it has been drawn uh, till now in your life uh, and they are absolutely revolutionary in your thinking about uh, your about the christian life here's the first uh, conclusion the power of jesus which he exercised during for the three and a half years we know about was not the power of the person of the trinity second person of the trinity but the power of the third person of the trinity in simpler language when the son of god became a human being he was subject to the limitations of human strength therefore he was unable to perform miracle himself or to preach the direct revelation of god himself until he had been anointed by the holy spirit in power and then as peter said years later having been anointed with power he went about doing good 
द सेकेंड अंडर कंक्लूजन इज इवन मोर रेवोल्यूशनरी दैट इफ दैट इज ट्रू एंड दैट द पावर जीसस हैड वॉज नॉट इज इज होन बट द पावर ऑफ द स्पिरिट देन एनी अदर ह्यूमन बींग कुड हैव द सेम पावर वाई वेन वी रीड जॉन चैप्टर फोर्टीन वर्स ट्वेल्व इट सेज आई टेल यू द ट्रूथ any one who believes in me will do the same work i have done and even greater works because i am going to be with the father in other words the power that jesus had you can have but the problem is you don't want it just because you have been taught you can't have it it has been stopped as i said earlier remember when you study about anything you need the whole bible nothing but the whole bible not just bits and pieces of some epistles that's the problem many people they put it in the message what about it's written in the book of corinthians just take a text out of context without understanding and then making it a cult that is not the way we should be we should be always allowing the word of god the full bible to help us guide us and instruct us uh, when we read luke chapter 11 verse 10 it says uh, for everyone who ask uh, receives uh, everyone who seeks find uh, and to everyone who knocks the door will be opened uh, remember very important it says asks seeks uh, and knocks uh, it doesn't say ask once seek once knock once it's a continuous tense remember you have to keep on asking till you receive it you have to keep on seeking till you receive it you have to keep on knocking till you receive it that's the attitude god is expecting from you if you haven't received the holy spirit you can't speak in tongues you need to keep on seeking doesn't matter you have been baptized 15 years back 17 years back 20 years back start seeking it's uh, i can't put it in words how much uh, the best feeling you can have to have the holy spirit with you remember the world cannot receive it only you who are born of the of the water and uh, taken the baptism in the water will receive it uh, when we read uh, luke chapter 11 verses 5 to 13 it says uh, then teaching of them about prayer he said this story suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight wanting to borrow 3 loaves of bread you say to him a friend of mine has just arrived for a visit and i have nothing for him to eat and suppose he calls out from his bedroom don't bother him the door is locked for the night and my family i are all in bed i can't help you but tell but i tell you this uh, though he won't do it for the friendship sake if you keep on knocking long enough he will get up and give you whatever you need because of your shameless persistence what it says a new living translation shameless persistence we need to have that attitude remember have you seen children they want a playstation they want a car they will no they don't have shame in asking they will be persistent abba i want it mother i want it father i want it daddy i want it i want it i want it and they will wear you down like that attitude you need to have when it comes to asking the holy spirit uh, sh- you don't have to sh- be ashamed of anything just ask persistently verse 9 says and so i tell you keep on asking and you will receive what you asked for keep on seeking and you will find keep on knocking the door will be open to you for everyone who ask receives everyone who seeks find and to everyone who knocks the door will be opened remember very important what it says you fathers if your children ask for a fish do you give them a snake instead or if they ask for an for an egg do you give them a scorpion of course not so if you sinful people know how to give good gift to your children how much more will your heavenly father give the holy spirit to those who ask of him in this simple sentence he is saying to us 
that you can have the anointing you can do the things here he does you can go on with the ministry he has begun if you will go on asking until you get the power the one thing is been taught in the church is that if you pray in tongues it it can be of the devil but remember you need to have faith if you have never been in a cult in black magic or anything that sort of thing remember you shouldn't be afraid that uh, and you should be or uh, like you should have the faith that whatever the father will give uh, remember that will be the best uh, it cannot be of the devil i remember one brother who came to me that he wants to be filled with the holy spirit we prayed for him he got only one word uh, you know it was the nyan he was speaking he was saying nyan 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 he said i want to say other words but i am only saying nyan and uh, in i think in malayalam nyan means me and uh, he was bit uh, depressed because uh, there there was a sister also when we were praying for both of them to receive the holy spirit i laid my hand and instantly she spoke in tongues and she was like speaking long sentences and he was like you know he couldn't say more than nyan and he was uh, depressed uh, and we, he went home and for months you know he was um, calling me he said brother mera to kuch nahi mera to bas ek hi word aa raha hai mere ko main kuch nahi bol pa raha hu mujhe main ekdam se thak jata hu like i am able to say only nyan and one word i don't know but remember if god gives you one word be faithful and recently he said uh, now god has given me more words that's how it's happened if god gives you one word you know he say that one word pray in that one word and in faith when you you will see that it will change uh, i i i speak uh, i have st- uh, stopped counting how many languages i speak uh, but when i whenever i pray you know holy spirit knows what language to speak uh, remember that is very very important uh, you need to have the gift of the holy spirit you need to speak in tongues uh, you need to have the desire that uh, if someone teaches you teaches you that has been ceased uh, that person has never understood the whole bible they are taking a text out of context uh, and they are trying to make it uh, as their tradition and culture i will say it rather a cult uh, but remember they have done the greater damage uh, and they are stopping people to experience the favor experience this power experience this great uh, i can't put it in words when i have to describe the holy spirit uh, you know when i sit and i don't know what to pray how to pray you know holy spirit prays for me with groanings sir uh, you know when my wife and i we pray you know there are times uh, when my wife uh, is speaking in tongues and she is crying she is crying she don't know what is she is praying for but remember holy spirit with groanings prays uh, uh, makes her to pray i see that happen with others also you know you know we need the holy spirit uh, we need to allow god to work in our life uh, i remember that uh, uh, even though i don't haven't heard lot of uh, preachings of uh, man of god late man of god uh, dgs dinakaran you know uh, i remember a story is it, it i read it or somebody shared with me i don't remember but you know that situation was one day man of god dgs dinakaran went to a house uh, and he didn't know the situation he didn't know anything and he just prayed in tongues for 15 minutes 15 to 30 minutes uh, and he went out of the house uh, he left the the house uh, he didn't know the situation but holy spirit prayed there and you know the things happened miracles happened in that house uh, that is why we need holy spirit uh, you know he is a comforter he is your helper what you cannot do on your own holy spirit helps you you know that is why you know when my wife and i we are in fasting and praying you know we are just praying in tongues we are just speaking in tongues miracles taking place uh, i tell you in this lockdown i have been blessed like never before i have seen god's hand like never before you know that's how we need to be when you walk with the lord when you walk in the spirit uh, when you are led by the spirit you will never fail you will never take wrong decisions because you are allowing you there will be no confusion 
first thing when you are filled with the holy spirit and that is how you need to live in your life uh, that is how you need to grow in your life beloved uh, remember uh, without the holy spirit uh, you are may you are living not uh, in the living water you are not experiencing that living water you that the streams of living water will flow out of you for that you need that uh, that first beginning baptism of the holy spirit uh, remember the baptism of the holy spirit baptism of water is once uh, and then god will fill you more and more and more with more knowledge more gifts uh, and you need to have that desire i wish i could invite you all to my house uh, and i can lay my hands and i can pray over you it is my desire but i know that it is not possible many of you are listening to this video you will be listening to this when i am not even alive but this video is a blessing to you but it is my desire as paul said i speak in tongues more than you and i desire you also to speak in tongues remember that we, i have that desire i have the desire that you be baptized with the holy spirit uh, if your church doesn't teach that uh, i will tell you a harsh thing leave that church the uh, go to a church uh, who teaches and emphasizes on the holy spirit uh, a balanced way the church, they, there are churches who balance more on the holy spirit uh, and they overlook god the father god the son and and they only emphasize on god the holy spirit uh, but look for a church uh, that has balanced way and remember one of the thing the sign of a person who is filled with the holy spirit he is that uh, that the person will speak of jesus uh, remember if i am filled with the holy spirit uh, i always speak about jesus more uh, that is how you will recognize is the church uh, is filled with uh, the holy spirit any spirit filled church uh, will talk about what jesus can do and what god can do and that is very important you go in any church and listen to the pastor once uh, if he is talking about i me and my family he is talking about the seeds he is talking about money you know that what, what who is his worship to worshiping but remember if uh, a man of god is filled with the holy spirit uh, what he will be doing is uh, he will be praising god he will take you more closer to god and he will be talk talking about jesus more and that is how you know that uh, this is the church where i should be remember it can be a small fellowship uh, they don't might not have the name they might not have a big building they might not have big uh, congregation no problem but remember grow Uh, you will grow more in a small congregation than in a big congregation where it's a ritual thing where people are sleeping like this uh, in church uh, you need to go to a church that is spirit filled that is power filled uh, where the servant of god where the man of god where the pro prophet of god where the pastor is talking about jesus because that's what Hol holy spirit does uh, it makes you more speak about jesus and that's what i see the children when they are filled with the holy spirit in our church uh, they talk about jesus they talk about how jesus is doing things how wonderful he is doing things that is a sign that you are filled with the holy spirit and you speak in unknown language and tongues so i believe this second part has blessed you do see to it that you subscribe so that you will not miss the third part and it is coming soon i am yet to start working on it i need your prayers so there are a lot of things on my plate uh, and i'm doing it alone everything i need your prayers i need you to stand with me let us pray father god we come to thy presence sir i give this word into thy hand uh, you help me to share this word in the context for that i thank you if anything i have said contrary to your word uh, lord i pray that you blot out that thing from your children's life and my life uh, if i have to share the truth master give uh, lord may the your may the spirit bear witness with your children and may they have the desire to grow in the holy spirit uh, and may they may, may lord fill them with your holy spirit uh, may they speak in tongues uh, may they be filled with the holy spirit uh, power and may lord use them fill them with your gifts uh, may the gifts uh, and the fruit of the holy spirit be evident in their life master lord you're doing it for that i thank you in jesus precious name we pray
amen 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 if you if you are blessed with this video see to it that you share this video with as many people as possible not just once but continuously in different facebook groups uh, in whatsapp group keep on sharing because it's been a blessing they remember ministry is not one man show i can work hard tirelessly i can make a video and i can bless you but remember it will not be a blessing until you share you keep on sharing with your friends in your church in other groups facebook groups whatsapp group and if you haven't downloaded my app if you are using an android phone or an apple phone download my app app name is evans francis and if the lord leads you become a pillar of fire or a pillar of cloud of our small ministry we need people like you to stand with you and i want to special thank people who are already a pillar of fire it's only because of you i am able to put my strength in the word of god use my time for the things of god and come up with such videos that can bless you and not only you for the coming generation for the decades for the centuries i would say if there is delay in the lord's coming may god bless you and uh, may god bless you may his face shine upon you stay blessed uh, keep smiling shalom